please join me in welcoming a leader who continues to lift his voice and lead works that are helping our country and our world ring with the harmonies of liberty. My friend, my fellow Southerner, my golfing companion, my duet partner, <laughs> William Jefferson Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, I want to thank Mark Uptegrove and all the staff at the LBJ Library for having this magnificent conference. And if it was your idea to have Vernon introduce me, I thank you for that. I did two things for Ms. Monica Lewinsky. I assisted her in trying to find employment in the private sector in New York City. I referred her for interviews at American Express and at Revlon where I am privileged to serve as a director. I also referred her to Young and Rubicam, a New York advertising agency. Secondly, when she was served with a subpoena and at her request, I recommended a very competent Washington lawyer, Mr. Frank Carter, I actually took her to Mr. Carter's office, I introduced them, and I returned to my office. Mr. Jordan, very big fan. Thank you. If I could just ask you, our news organization actually ran into Bill Clinton, uh -huh. and he said you invited him to the 1991 Bilderberg Group yeah, meeting. Yeah, I did. My question is, how did, who selected him right before he became president? And what happened at this very secretive establishment with no coverage of the press? Well, we just had a good, we just had a good meeting. I mean, there's no press coverage. You have international elites in banking, yeah. media, corporations, and press meeting in secret. And yeah. everybody calls it a conspiracy, and it never happened. Well, it's not it a does. conspiracy. I've been going since yeah. 1969. What happens then? We have a discussion. There's an agenda, and yeah. we discuss it. Barack Obama and we put out a report. in 2008. No, he's never been. He's never been there? No. Not I can just ask, why is there no press coverage of something so important? Because we don't, we don't want any press coverage. We don't, we don't have to have press coverage. It is the world's elite meeting in secret. Many people say they've engineered this yeah, economic crisis to start a one world government. You, you listen to the LaRouche yeah. people, they don't know what they're doing. No, no, not LaRouche people. Uh, I just have to ask, I mean, international reports have come out and they said that the Bilderberg does set up policy. And it's not just discussions. We don't, so we're not a policy making group. But uh, Condoleezza Rice discussed missile defense systems and it was reported by international uh, sources yeah, but that, 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 that she mean, set she, policy for it there. Yeah, no, no, she wasn't setting policy, yeah. she was making a speech. There's yeah. a difference. People come together to talk. We don't we don't vote. Nobody pays us any attention. Yeah. The only thing the only reason people pay us attention because there's this mystique around us. And it's also violates the Logan Act. I don't know if you're aware no, of that. No, it's not, no. Because no. you can't discuss policy with other people without approval from the government first. Well you can make you can discuss policy with anybody like I was doing yeah. in there. I mean, it was said, I mean, some people say Bilderbergs have come out and said that they actually planned this economic crisis to create a one-world government, a one-world order. That's just bullshit. What about David Rockefeller saying himself he wants a one-world government? But that doesn't mean that everybody accepts that, okay? Yeah, it was started by Prince Bernhard, a Nazi as well. I, he was not a Nazi. He's a Dutchman. He's, he's also a Nazi. Look that up, sir. And I nice thank you for you. your openness, and I thank you for talking to me. You said you would go if I answered the question. All right, here's the answer. I happened to be in Europe then on my way to Russia. I was invited to go to Bilderberg by Vernon Jordan, a friend of mine and a genuine hero of the civil rights movement.
Senator Clinton, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you Can doing? I ask you a quick question while you sign that? Sure. It was reported in June of 2006, you attended a meeting in Ottawa, Canada, the Bilderberg Group. Can you comment on that? What do you, what's going on for the Bilderberg meeting and what do you guys talk about up there? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. I was reported you were up there and people saw you up there. I just want to know what you guys talk about and meet about up there. Uh, sir, I don't Why know. Why are they such I, top secret meetings? I have no idea what you're talking your about. Your husband went to a Bilderberg meeting too. Uh, I'm just wondering. I'm not being rude or anything. No, I I, I just, I I just want to know what I happens at these that. meetings. Well, uh, since I wasn't there, I have no idea. Okay, thank you, Senator. Hi, thank you. How are you? Just as surely as Hillary Clinton is the first lady, Vernon Jordan is the first friend. A quiet, powerful player in Washington, he is the man the president often turns to when he needs either sage counsel or a golfing partner. Vernon Gordon, how you doing? Hey, <laughs> you were with the president last night, yes, watching watching uh, the uh, action at the convention. What did he think? How did he feel when it went over the top? Uh, he uh, he was both melancholy and joyful. It was a, it was a great moment. Think about it. 50 years old and you're being nominated by your party to be president of the United States for the second time. That's, that's got to be a good moment and it was a good moment for him. He was very enthusiastic. He, he loved Al Gore's speech. He cheered. Hey, there you see its cover. He's Vernon E. Jordan Jr., an old friend. He was president and CEO of the National Urban League, a longtime civil rights activist, my New York breakfast partner. And is it true Mr. Jordan, that you told Barack Obama some two years ago you didn't think it was his time. Uh, it, is, it is true that I said, if you are contemplating it, it is my judgment that this is not your season. I have never been so wrong in my life. And in retrospect then, looking back, why were you wrong? What changed? He won. <laughs> Very simple. And something you obviously didn't expect. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm unhappy about it. I am excited <laughs> about it. I am in a state of incredulous disbelief almost. <laughs> but I am happy about it. President Obama's on vacation with his family in Martha's Vineyard, and as he does often during weekends and vacations, he is playing some golf. According to the White House, his partners today, Vernon Jordan, former U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk, and former President Bill Clinton. Here's a look at some video of that group today.